animal health and human health are very closely intertwined. The relationship between animal and human health, people have always paid attention to it, but never as closely as we've seen in the last five years. I think now people are recognizing that if we're going to look at human health problems, we also have to look at animal health problems as well as environmental issues. And for example, in Africa we see viruses like Ebola viruses. Well, right now they're studying not only the environmental impact, but also the impact on animals as well as humans. And with that data that they're getting from studying those issues, they're better able to predict when an outbreak's going to happen, how severe an outbreak's going to be, et cetera. A recent example of where an outbreak in animals, we're told an, an outbreak in humans, is with the avian influenza, which we saw over in Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, we were seeing the flocks come down with the disease, and then after that we saw humans come down with the disease as well. And that's a really good example of the, the close link of animal and human health. And in, in those countries, people, people are closer to their animals. So, you know, they might have flocks of birds in their backyard and they're closely working with their birds. And that's why we see a significant problem between transference between the animals and humans. In our country, um, our agriculture is built a little bit differently and we're more aware of biosecurity of, of you know, not only humans bringing things into the flocks, but potentially the flocks bringing things into humans. The world is really getting smaller. We're seeing people travel between countries. And in the case of the H1N1 or the swine flu, we saw folks that had traveled into Mexico come back to the United States with, you know, and then come down with the, uh, you know, with symptoms. So I think it's very important that veterinarians and medical doctors work very closely on these issues. Um, so that we can have optimal human health, and that's what everybody's looking for. I think that there is a disconnect between veterinarians and, hu and human doctors about diseases, but I will say that over the last five to ten years, both groups, both veterinarians and medical doctors, have been working very closely to eliminate that, that disconnect. And, and I'll give you an example. You know, veterinarians know that roundworms in dogs potentially could infect kids. Um, and we're taught that in veterinary school. And I think humans, human doctors are taught that as well, but when they get out into practice, a lot of times that just becomes an animal disease. And, and you have to always be reminded that there's potential to transmit that type of thing from dogs to humans. And, and medical doctors have to continue to be aware of that. It's really, really important that pets get vaccinated. Um, most commonly, we vaccinate pets when they're younger. So when they're you know, six to eight weeks, we'll see a puppy or a kitten come in for not only a good physical exam to make sure that the animal's healthy, but also get the first in a series of shots that we give until they're 16 to 20 weeks old. And then beyond that, it's usually a, a once a year booster that we like to give those animals. And it's to keep them protected against things like rabies, distemper, parvovirus, leptospirosis, hepatitis. And those are the most common things that, that potentially um, our dogs and cats could come down with that would cause them to be ill. Anytime that you're handling your pet, whether it's a dog or a cat or a reptile or a guinea pig, you always should use good hygiene after handling them. And you always should wash your hands with soap and water or with you know one of the over-the-counter antibacterial type gels that they have now. So you should always do that anytime you handle an animal. Um, and, it, and it's just good, proper hygiene. One Health is a new concept that aims at enhancing communication and collaboration among the fields of human health, animal health, and environmental health. One Health is important given that approximately 75% of recently emerging infectious diseases affecting humans are diseases of animal origin. Approximately 60% of all human pathogens are zoonotic, meaning that they are transmitted from animals to humans. Many animal pathogens are also bioterrorism threat agents. The triple threat of infectious diseases demands new ways of working in public health and new collaborations that do not exist today. To best respond to these threats, a One Health concept needs to be adopted. The future of the One Health movement will require increased collaboration and cooperation among government agencies at all levels, 
local, state, and federal, as well as among members of the veterinary, human health, and wildlife health communities. For more information about One Health, contact the American Society for Microbiology, the American Veterinary Medical Association, the American Medical Association, or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Diseases That Changed Our World. Available today from ASM Press at eStore.asm.org.